Hi, my name is Andrew and I'm building a 12 and a half meter catamaran from scratch. And I love using my 3D printer, but I have a problem. The parts it makes are not strong enough for most of the things on my catamaran. But I also have a solution, so let me show you. So, I recently came across this video here from a channel called Easy Composites, where they 3D print out a mold, and then they put carbon fiber inside the mold to make a, what they call a forged carbon fiber part. I had a look around online to see if anybody had made a boat cleat out of this using this technique before and I found this one. This one's over a thousand pounds, so well over a thousand euros just for this part. So let's try to make one on our own. So I quickly opened Fusion 360 and I designed my own version of the cleat here. And it's looking pretty good. So then what I did was I used the same program to make some molds. And I did a three-part mold because that's what Easy Composites recommends uh, for this process to make it easier to come apart. So we have our first part here, which is the part that will be the piston to shove all the carbon fiber down. And then two parts down here that will make up the body of the cleat. Now I sent in those files into my 3D printer slicer software and it's loaded them up and it says it will take about 15 hours to print. So the printer started here and in about 15 hours we should have our molds finished printing. So let me know, this is my first time trying this technique, let me know in the comments if you think it'll work out or you think if I'll have a failure on my first try. So I've got the mold here for my cleat, my forged carbon fiber cleat, all back, uh, it's all printed out. And it's three parts here, so these two parts will actually contain the cleat. And the third part is the plunger here, which will compress all the fibers together. And then I have some alignment holes here to align both and, and some pins to go in. And so basically the idea is I'll clamp these guys together with the alignment pins to make sure it's all aligned. And then I'll put in all the carbon fiber and epoxy and then I'll stick in the plunger. And then I'll compress everything together and then I'll let it harden and I'll make a nice cleat. Um, and yeah, it's three parts because hopefully it'll be easier to get the part out afterwards. Uh, that's what Easy Composites recommends, so that's what I'm going with. Let's do it. So, actually the very first thing I'm going to do here is take some of this mold release wax. I'm supposed to shake it up before using it. Alright, I understood the instructions correct. I'm just going to apply it to the mold so it all comes apart hopefully afterwards. That'll be easier while it's still disassembled. So let's do it. Try not to knock it over again. So I don't actually have any pre-chopped fibers, but I have this unidirectional claw left over from the four beam project here. So I'm just gonna kind of tear off little bits and fibers and I'll keep some long because if you keep some long bits when you put it in, that can add some strength. And, uh, and then also I cut some short as well. So we need about, I think 40 grams or a little bit more, but you can calculate it based on the volume of your part, which I can see on Fusion 360. So I'll just keep cutting away strands here. And, um, and then we'll have some carbon to put in. So I used to take the strands off the uni. I can use some of them along and I can also make some of them nice and short. So I can put the bottom two halves together with the alignment pin. accurate 3d printer is here we go got them lined up there's the bottom half of our mold so we mix up some epoxy here it's a little, a little dark plus we have a dark mold dark carbon fiber, so we'll see if you guys can see any of it. And 
now, we just take our little strands of carbon here, which we got, and we just mix them up with some epoxy, and then we try to shove them in to the epoxy as we go in here. So we'll start with just some shorter strands. So it's just a matter of here, we have our mold. We're just sticking in the carbon into the mold. She was brighter. <laughs> and then we can put some epoxy in as well. Just to get it all mixed up in there. And we'll just keep that up. Hopefully this turns out. Next time I'll print out a brighter clear mold for more contrast. Okay. Yeah, I'm basically just taking my short strands of carbon here and just putting them in the mold, black on black. And then I take a little bit of epoxy as well. And I just want to get make sure that everything is nice and wet out as it's going in. Bit of an awkward shape, but it's getting there. And then, let's just take this seam in here and just shove it in a bit. So, we have all of our resin and carbon here in the mold. And so the next step here is to insert our plunger. This is what's going to compress it down. So we'll press, press, press. That's a good start. But next, basically, we can compress it well with our vise here. Anyway, so then basically, we can just compress it slowly. Compress, compress, compress. The mic is on, that's good. Keep compressing here. So we're just compressing our mold here. Should be squeezing everything together nicely. Just about fully compressed. A little bit of epoxy squeeze out at the back. Shouldn't be too much of a problem because I put in extra. So we've got it fully closed here with our vise. We've got it fully clamped together. So everything, all that epoxy and carbon fiber should be getting squeezed together. We got a good mix of long toes in with some with some shorter ones as well. Um, so that's nice and together and we can let the resin harden for about 24 hours and then we can come back and see how we did. So that'll be fun. Hopefully it came out well. We'll see. It's my first time doing this so it could be a failure. You never know. We have now our vice, which is still not bolted down to the table which is a bit funny but we have, it makes it at least a bit easier for filming. Um, we have our part fully clamped together. Our plunger is fully plunged in. It's hopefully compressing our carbon and Epoxy all together and making a nice part, but we've got to let it cure now for 24 hours. And yeah, let it cure for 24 hours and we'll demold it and we'll see what we got. So we've let our piece harden up overnight, so now let's see if we can demold it. Oh, that's tight. Got some pretty good clamping force on there. Hammering to un. Do this and should have put a chamfer on this edge. Lesson learned. Let's see if we can get it demolded. Yeah, so it's my first time doing this, so I'm excited to see how it comes out. Maybe like nothing, maybe like something. So it's definitely a little tough to demold, but I'm starting to get some 
splitting here is starting to come loose. So I think I'm gonna be able to get it. Here's the top edge of the cleat, black on black, so you can't really see. Right there, and that's the plug. So, well, you cracked this bit of the mold here, trying to get it apart. Not too unexpected. So we'll just see if we can continue trying to, at least this part of the mold won't be able to be reused. So we'll see if we can just break it off. We got the cleat out of the mold. This is how it has come out. There's a few small imperfections here and you can see we had some little bit of fiber running up around the plug. Um, but overall it's looking pretty good. It feels really strong. Um, so now I just have to trim up the edges and do a little sanding. But yeah, it's pretty promising the way it turned out. The mold, unfortunately, one piece came out off clean, but I realized I had some geometries that kind of locked it together once it was done. So the mold did get destroyed during the demolding process, but that's kind of expected. I made a couple of mistakes in design, which I can correct. Um, so I can extract it better in the future. But yeah, I think this is really promising. It feels super, super strong, which is super, super strong, which is, which is nice. I'm looking more or less like the 3D model with a couple of imperfections, which is okay for the first try. Um, and yeah, should be good enough to do a little bit of strength testing. You can see how strong this really is. So, just trimmed the edge here. We'll require some sanding next. So here's the cleat in CAD. And here's the final product, a little bit of cleanup. I think it looks quite nice. Feels rock solid. Uh, made a few mistakes along the way, learned a lot. Really, But I'm really pleased for the first time doing this, um, how it came out and definitely um, I think I'll be doing this again for some other parts. So let me know what you think and what other parts I can make using this technique. So yeah, forged carbon fiber cleat. Um, first attempt, most of success. Have to work on our molding techniques, though I was kind of expecting the mold, have to break the mold to get it out. Um, definitely with some improvements to the mold design um, and using some uh, PVA. Should be able to get that out of, the, out of the mold, which is good, and reuse it so I don't have to print it again or I could remake the mold using a different material. Um, yeah, and just wanted to address some of the, the Instagram, the comments I got on my Instagram post about this. Yeah, I think, I think there's, people made a lot of good points. Forged carbon fiber, first of all, it's not technically not forged. That's a bit of a marketing term, but that's okay. I think it still has a really, really nice result. Another sort of criticism of the technique is that, you know, the carbon fiber and composites, they get their strength from having a really long continuous fiber. So, you know, it's definitely not as strong as if, you know, you had really long optimized fiber layouts. Um, but we did use some, some, some long fibers in, like, like Easy Composites says, uh, to sort of improve the strength among with the, the, with the chop stuff. Um, so if it's a bit stronger, I hope to do a, a nice strength test at some point so we can really see. But it should be much stronger than like an aluminum cleat of the same dimensions, um, which I think is quite nice. What else? Um, yeah, the design could have, maybe I could have rounded out things a little bit more, but it's easy to fix in design. I did round all the corners, so hopefully ropes don't catch and I can also sand that as well. Uh, I think the points around like sort of UV and chafing are really good ones. It's something you definitely have to use some kind of UV resistant coating if this were to be used on the boat. Um, so it's a little bit of extra maintenance versus like a steel or aluminum cleat. Um, but I think it looks really cool. And I think it's like good practice to, it's good practice to do this. Um, so we can use this technique and make some other parts. And it's a good way to use up sort of some of that leftover carbon fiber um, that's just sort of sitting around and it's too small to do with. So it's a really good way to sort of use, to, to use that up. And I think we'll definitely try to make some more um, pieces using this technique just because I think it's cool and it's always fun to try new things and optimize them. So yeah, thanks for following along and uh, yeah, follow along as I build the actually whole big catamaran that I'm working on.